Hey game devs, welcome back. Let's draw some rocks. I'm one of the developers working on Dwerve. It's a tower defense dungeon crawler. And I did a lot of this pixel art and I'll teach you how to do some of it, all right? And <laughs> do me a favor and wish this the game on Steam. So here's Dwerve, our, uh, our little man. He's a little dwarf, Dwerve the dwarf. He's a 16 by 16 character, and I'm going to show you how to do these rocks 16 by 16, but whatever. It applies to any resolution. <clears throat> so check this out. There's a couple of cool, um, couple of cool things for me to show you. Um, here are some um, crystals, and I'll show you a technique for doing crystals. And let's uh, check out this, this spot too over here. This is basically what I'll be teaching today is how to do rocks like this. These are boulders and that's kind of the rock technique, just, you know, connect a bunch of them together. And magma mines, check this, oh yeah. What else we got? And then we got stalagmites over here. All right, let's get started. All right, so when you're drawing rocks, you'll be tempted to just do gray, but gray's boring, go a little blue, you know? You know what I'm saying? Uh, go a little blue, go a little brown. Uh, don't just go like straight up gray. <clears throat> Reserve that for like metal or something. All right, um, here we go. <laughs> so I like to start by just uh, doing the shape of a rock. And since it's a natural, uh, a natural thing, you don't want to make it, oops, you don't want to make it a perfect circle. So the shape that I go for is I sort of pick a point and I don't put it in the center. So when you're drawing your rock, don't don't do that. You know, don't also don't do this. It, it looks more. It looks better if the tallest point is a little off to the side, not in the center. It just looks more natural. Um, and then let's just fill that in. All right. So whatever. There's our rock. I think it's a little too bright. Let me switch to HSV, um, hue saturation vibrance, or value, uh, whatever. <laughs> One of those. And let's, um, let's, des let's uh, desaturate this a little bit. I'll, I'll mess with the colors a little bit more later, but okay. I get a little bit more. All right, there we go. So let's add an outline for this. Um, you, you'll probably want to go all the way black. A lot, of, a lot of pixel art games, a lot of pixel art uses um, straight up black for, for the outlines. I do prefer to, however, wait, oh shit, I did it on the grass layer. I'm just going to outline this uh, real quick. Okay, so I do not like to um, put an outline where the image touches the floor. I don't like to do that. And then I also, let me make this a little bit lighter. I also don't like to have black near the top. So let's say this is our base color, right? We're gonna shade with um, a darker, um, a darker version of it. Um, maybe I'll saturate a little bit. And um, I'm going, I'm transitioning this, you know, a little bit here. And then I like to take that color and put it near the top. That's actually a little too bright. I need to make that darker. Here's a cool, uh, cool little trick. You can take your color, go about halfway on the alpha, and then go on top of another color. And now it's like a, it's like a, it's like when you mix colors when you're painting or whatever. That's kind of what it feels like. So that way, it still has, it literally has this color um, in it. So that's a good way to, uh, that's a good way to mix colors is to do the 50% opacity. All right, so here we got a rock. Um, this edge looked a little too sharp, so whatever. I'm just um, Softening it up a little bit. I like this. I like this. If we go here, it looks pretty good. Um, actually, I think I should make yeah that transit tr that transition a little bit better. There we go. There's our there's our rock shape. I hope this made sense to you. The reason why I'm lightening this top is if you watched my furniture video um, or my shading video, etc. Um, when there's light coming from above, if you make the outline lighter, it gives it um, a sense of lighting. 
And you should definitely watch my furniture <laughs> video because a lot of the techniques actually um, work with natural stuff like rocks as well. But the furniture is a great way to get a really quick grasp of it because those the furniture objects are you know a lot more square, so it's a it's a lot easier for it to make sense in your head than it will when we do forms like this. Okay, so the next thing that I always do when I draw rocks is I duplicate it a whole bunch of times because it's really easy to draw a stupid looking rock. <laughs> Let me get rid of that. We don't need that anymore. Oops. Let me move it over just a little more. <clears throat> so I'm just going to have like, whatever, three here. And then I'll do three variations and I'll pick my favorite one or work with the one that I like. And if I like all of them, well then I drew three rocks and that's fantastic either way, right? So the next thing I'm going to do is create a highlight and a shadow. <clears throat> Obviously, if you just went across, that gives it no form. So we're going to um, just bend it a little bit, you know, something like this. And then I'm going to fill that in. I, um, I like to have the darkest color not actually go very high up because um, we'll bring it up higher um, later on when we do cracks and stuff like that. And then um, we could highlight this as well. But before I highlight it, what I like to do is just use this darker color to sort of like create the, the shape of the rock. Um, you see how this bends in a little bit? It kind of looks like this would be a good spot for um, another piece of, the, piece of that stone and whatever. I'll just color in this in like that. Whatever. Just draw some kind of shape and then we'll make up the rest. If it's too round like this, it doesn't look super natural. So what you want to do is draw, oopsie. So what you want to do is draw um, uh, sort of like segments, sort of like break it up into, into pieces. And let's say, let's say for me, it's this. I think this looks a little too, too basic. So I'm gonna add one more here in the middle. And check that out, that already looks pretty decent um, for a rock. Don't put highlights too low down here because we still want it to, you know, to keep form. So do something about like this. Um, for this one, I think this one is fine. Maybe we'll do a little like, um, a little highlight there. Makes it look more natural if there's different parts that are highlighted and it makes it look less spherical. So it's nice to um, to just have little random highlights within the within the shading. This one looks kind of wonky. Let me um, let me give it a little more form somehow. There we go. Maybe something like that. Pretty cool little technique, right? To give your to give your rocks some some nice shapes. It kind of looks like there's a lot too much dark here, so I'm just gonna um, maybe put a dot there or something like that. All right, so we got our like first basic um, shading. Now, what I want to do is um, I'm looking here, and it's not really that dark, I, uh, so I will want to go darker, and I'll probably just um, try this color first. Oh, that's too dark. That's too dark. So I'll do that trick that I showed you again. I'll grab this color, go about halfway, and then I'll put it over this one. Now I have a nice um, in between color and with this color you ca I, I do like to sometimes put this dark color um, on the bottom remember I don't want to go with uh, on the bottom with black and I don't want to go on the bottom too dark but this this is fine I, I do I do like doing this so I'm just putting this on the very bottom to increase the um, the contrast with this uh, with this shading but to give it even more form here's a cool little trick you can take this and you can put it in here um, to make it look like there's crevices in the rock. I like to put it um, usually near the edge, which um, makes the crack look a little bit more prominent. And then I like to put it somewhere in the middle. So maybe something like this. I think actually, I think I'm gonna leave that one like that. And then from the bottom, you can also have it work its way up as well. So here, I'll show you with this one. Um, let's say we want a, a sort of like a, a crack to go up through here. You get to, uh, you know how we did cracks with this color? Now you basically get to do the same thing, but with a, with a, with a darker color. 
So you, you feel free to kind of draw, you know, draw cracks in the rock with this color. You don't want to do it here though. You want to make sure you do it near the bottom because this color is too dark to be up here near the near the top. We, we want this to look like there's there's enough light there that this color wouldn't appear here. Uh, it, it wouldn't be possible. All right, and let's do it on, let's do that here on this <clears throat> last one. Oh, last one too. I think I'm just gonna do something like this. Okay, sweet. Um, those rocks are looking pretty snazzy already. I think this isn't, this could go darker. I, I should have went darker with this. Um, these two colors are too close to each other. It doesn't look bad here on the rock, but it doesn't create quite the contrast that I wanted. The quickest way for me to do that is to just select all these and you go to um, edit adjustments and there's brightness and contrast. And here I can just increase the contrast. It'd be more annoying to replace the color or recolor it. So here I'm just gonna pull this up a little bit and maybe pull the brightness up because um, let me show you. If you increase the contrast, the whole thing's gonna get darker. So if you increase contrast, you also have to increase the brightness. I overdid it there a little bit. Let me tone it down. All right, I think that's a lot of contrast. Um, does that look better? It's almost too much contrast, right? Um, control Z, Control Y. No, no, that's not too much contrast. And Control D, D uh, selects. I don't remember if that's the default hot here if I did that, but <clears throat> I didn't add a shadow yet. Um, we might as well add a shadow. The quickest way to create a shadow, I think, is to duplicate your layer, then go to Edit, Adjustments, Brightness and Contrast, and just um, put the brightness to zero. So now they're completely black. It's basically you filled it in black. Move that under um, whatever you, uh, whatever your thing was. So I'm just gonna move this um, move this down one. And then if you double click the layer in a sprite. By the way, if you want a key, I'm I am giving out keys uh, whenever I get them. Um, so in the comment section below, just let me know you want a key. So here in the opacity. I just uh, I like to bring it down to around um, 30 or something like that, and that was a pretty quick way to do shadows, right? Let's rename this to Rock Shadow. Of course, if you have a bigger object, it's not going to be as simple. You'll want to make it um, the shadow larger or whatever. But this is a quick way to do shadows for things that are near the ground on the ground. All right, now we need to add in our uh, our highlight. I think so. We're just going to grab our color. And all you gotta do is um, increase the vibrance. And let's see, that's not that's, that's not enough contrast. It's hard for me to tell here whether the contrast is good enough. I like to look up uh, up at the little um, preview window because if I can't tell if I can't see it clearly in the preview window, then I know I didn't make it high enough. I think that might be a little too high. Um, let me find a sweet spot. I also like to decrease the saturation um, sometimes. I'm not hue shifting here for the rock. You could hue shift um, when you're doing the, uh, so I could go um, left or right to give the rock a little bit more color. Uh, like check it out, if I go a little bit left, I actually you probably have to go over here. You see how we can sort of like give the, the, the hue a tint? Um, it's kind of a cool, uh, I think it makes objects look more interesting if you hue shift as you shade. So um, I will, I'll do a little bit of it. And um, this is a little bit of a blue shade and I'm just going more blue f with the highlight. Um, let's say, let's say here we have a rock and there's flat parts of the rock that are pointing up. These are the parts that you want to give this highlight. You don't want to really shade it like a like a circle. You want to shade it, you want to give it highlights more so like this. And now check it out, if I grab a darker color and put it here on the sides, 
Do you see what, what look it's creating? It's creating this stone look where it looks like there's a, a, a top and a side. And that's th this sort of technique is what we want to do with this rock. So we don't want to just give it this little shine at the top. We actually want to highlight, um, highlight parts of it. And my favorite parts to highlight are um, usually the edges or the part that is the most flat. So for example, let's say um, this rock right here, we want to emphasize this edge. I like to put the highlight right here near the edge. So I'm gonna, just gonna do that with all three of these and then I guess we'll talk about it a little bit more. So as you can see, I'm highlighting the edge and then I'm sort of picking a large chunk and putting a highlight on the large chunk. This makes it look like it's not super, um, super round. Sometimes I like to emphasize the highlight and you can cr you do that by creating more contrast by putting a darker color um, in between um, two areas like that, like I just did right there. This gave it a lot more form. Don't get too complicated though. Um, there's beauty and simplicity, you know what I mean? I mean, I don't know, that's, I'm kind of done. <laughs> we could kind of do a lot more here, but I don't think I want to. Um, the only thing really left to do is to make parts a little bit more reflective. It depends on what kind of rock it is, of course, but some rocks, you know how they have those like little shines in them? Um, I think they're called sedimentary rocks. So let's go even brighter and then sort of like pick a few, you, you wanna go really bright with this, and then almost white, decrease the saturation, yeah. And then pick a few areas that are, are gonna be just like, okay, that's too bright. A few areas that are just gonna be these little shines. And it really makes those edges look sharper too. And there you have it. Damn! <laughs> I think those look pretty good. Um, I hope you understood my technique. Um, I did make these rocks look pretty complicated to I feel like I should draw one more and kind of like oversimplify the the process of the shading so let me just do one more here's one side here's another side here's another side and if you look here you can see that the shading makes makes sense right looks like there's a light coming from above um, it looks like there's a, um, a side that's a little bit um, darker and a side that's a little bit lighter you can tell that you can tell that the lighting is coming in from from this angle so also don't forget to take you know the brighter color and put that near an edge remember we did this in the furniture tutorial this is kind of the kind of the same thing you're putting a brighter color um, near an edge and uh, it just emphasizes that, that that's like a sharp corner and um, let me copy this and then and then this is the shading technique but I'm gonna make it a little I'm gonna make it look a little bit more organic and a little bit more rock like so what all you got to do is take the same thing and then sort of like uh, duplicate this technique in another part of it so here I'm gonna pick um, another part that's the top another part that's let's say the side and it's almost like I'm combining it's almost like I'm combining the the shapes and look it's creating these uh, these uh, these stones Now it looks like it looks like little rocks next to each other. But of course these are super square. But this is the technique that I did to do these rocks. All right, so now I'm just going to try to make it a little bit less less square and more like the um, more like the other rocks. So I'm just going to um, round this uh, a little bit, make, make it a little bit rounder. And then um, another quick way to make it look 
less flat is to add those those uh, cracks. So add, add some uh, add some cracks in this. This part right here looks pretty flat. So I'm gonna go ahead and pick like let's say this spot right here, and then I'm going to let the crack grow out from from uh, from that spot. But remember, we don't want this color on top of this one because this is the top. So make sure you lighten it as it as it comes to the top. It's gonna get lighter. There's uh there it is. You know, you start with uh, this basic shading, add more pieces to it, and make it rounder. I don't like you know starting like this. I'm I'm doing this in my head. Uh, I was doing that in my head when I was doing these, but I realized that maybe I need to explain what's going on in my head and why I'm shading things the way I am. This is sort of the technique. The the thing is with this though. You don't have to have the light coming in from the side. If the light was coming more from the top, then what would what would happen is you could have the highlight on both sides and you would have this darker color on both sides as well. You know what I mean? Uh, w w whatever, disregard that. Um, I do want to show you something really awesome though. This is a mountain in Dwerv and check out <laughs> this rock shading. It's fucking amazing, right? So Anche helped me out with that art, and you should follow him on Twitter, and also follow me. There's a link in the description uh, um, to my itch, and if you go to my itch, there's gonna be um, a free to use in-game uh, pixel art, and I'm gonna add those rocks to that, so you don't even have to draw those rocks, you can just use the ones that I made. And I'm gonna keep adding to this, so you should follow me. In the top right corner here, it'll say, uh, follow Pixel Pete. And I'd really appreciate that. Let's just take one last look at Dwarf so I can point out a few of those techniques. Here you can see there's a highlight near the edge, a highlight near the edge, a highlight near the edge. And um, I didn't, you know, didn't make the top too bright. You don't want to do that. I, you don't want to make it look too round. You sort of want to pick sides. You see how there's like a slab here, um, a side that is shaded. Um, uh, he, here a side, here a side, etc. You, get, I think, I think you get the idea. Yeah, buddy. Oh yeah, I forgot. I said I was gonna show you how to do crystal stuff. Um, <laughs> with crystals, basically, you want to go all the way white when you when you're near the edge, which makes it look uh, reflective. And then um, uh, the same thing. Pick sort of like a point. That, uh, you want high contrast near the edges. Increase the contrast near the edges, and sort of pick a spot where you're gonna go all the way white. So it looks like it's um, shiny. Here's a good example of this. You see how the edge is is brighter than these two colors. It makes it look more reflective. And then even in here, there's brighter colors in some areas. So that way it doesn't look super smooth. Here's uh, another example of that. There's an area where you go a little bit brighter. And that's how you do crystals. By the way, Panic Pop is my clothing line and I'm legit giving away free shirts on the site. I hope that helped. I'll see you next week, DevLine.